in my study, which is my bedroom. Body work time is what I do in here. I like to shut myself in and just meditate on body thoughts, body pains, body movements. And I've been thinking a lot about this uh, movement of what happens to the pelvis through the pressure change in a turn. The pressure change occurs, I'm thinking of a slalom uh, race, pressure change occurs across under the gate, that short leg takes pressure and and we rotate over. So we, we did powerful, powerful turn, came across the short legs, taken over, and we're going, so that pressure change, what's happening to the pelvis is what I'm meditating on. And if we, how to dry, if you do the physics on it, one, you got two skis, one's taking a shorter radius. So this outside ski has to go a longer distance uh, to keep up. So when that pressure changes, this outer ski is actually moving faster too. It needs to move faster. Um, and th that's where the thing is, it needs to move faster. So when, we, when we're going across and we're taking the pressure and changing, there has to be something in the hip that's where that leg system is attached. If we're seeing the foot in front of the hip, when that pressure changes, that means that hip is not in progress uh, for that change. That makes sense. Um, I could describe it like this. So we come, this hip is tracking because we're right centered on that foot. Our center of mass is going through the arch of the foot. We're carving that turn. And we come, we take the gate out, okay, and look at the distance between the two, wherever it is, what, you know, it could be up here. Okay, so once we take that gate out, where pressure, um, you know, the pressure has started to transfer when we take that gate out, but when this actually comes up and off the snow, because we've got to get... 100% of our weight, almost 90% of our weight. I think one ski is faster. If we could have that one just skimming across the snow in the right position as we move over. So what's happened to this hip? This hip has to, has to accelerate. It has to accelerate. And so it can only accelerate against something else. So as we come down out of the last edge change and we're set up with our, we're getting our angle set up and we're dropping down. We have all our weight on that outside ski. And as we come into the turn, we're starting to create some foundation here slightly with this inside ski. And that is going to give us something to keep driving this hip around the turn. And then as that, as we take out the gate, and cross under um, we have we can continue this process of bringing this hip around against the pressure of this leg it has to have something to move against when you're releasing pressure on it you know it's hard to drive it against itself we can keep it locked and strong but that waist so some people call it waist steering um, maybe so I I brought in the article or uh, read an article or a YouTube video on somebody that was doing movement analysis and ligety and was claiming race steering, but this was in giant slalom uh, or super G, I don't know what he was doing, not slalom. And I'm talking, I'm looking at an image in my mind of a slalom turn where that uh, pressure change, uh, ha the stage of pressure change is where this ski becomes weightless pretty much weightless and the tip is in the air and that means the hip is behind the foot okay or the foot got ahead of the hip whatever it is more likely it's because this hip is taking a faster rate a wider radius it has to travel a further distance this hip isn't being driven around 
with the slight pressures that they can work against on the inside ski, especially as it starts to engage into the turn and take some pressures as it goes underneath the gate, taking out the gate, and then we go weightless again on this foot. That hip has to be there. So movement training, motor skill exercises, um, I can't, I was doing this. I was working on this left leg. And it's kind of a yogish thing. But this pressure is pushing that way, this leg, and the pressure is moving this way. You can keep the feet flexed and just use the heel. And then this pressure from the hip is driving against it. So not with the hip flexors, the front muscles, the quadriceps trying to pull this leg up, well not extend, but the hip flexors, everything is pulling this leg uh, up like this. We don't want that. That'll bring the tip off. That leaves the hip back where it was. So the pressure and the training that we have to do, the motor skills training, is to activate these muscles that drive that ski around. Okay, so it's real easy to drop this knee into uh, the hill. It's hard to finish out the turn, continuing to drive this hip forward and around so this seems to activate that motor skill if I push on this hard enough to get these two legs parallel I like this. I think this is really, really going to be helpful uh, to train this whole system. So we're finishing the rotation. Pushing against this leg, creating pressure, as this would happen in a short leg at transition, uh, in the phase of pressure transition. And rather than pulling up against it like this, we're pushing in with our hip. And so these guys are super engaged and I want to go to the point of cramping. I'm waking those up and I'm visualizing the phase of the turn and this muscle and this movement being used in my turn in the desired look in producing a level ski, a, an outside ski that's releasing in really efficient tracks with that direction of the inside ski. Um, and so Luke, that's where I see your talent, is you, you have great vision for your, the course and your the ability to transfer pressures and ski that inside ski to its new edge being the outside is super on. Uh, this is what needs to happen though. I'm pretty certain that we have to strengthen and bring intelligence in to this structure here. So as it's driving through the turn, we want to get this upper core and pelvis fired up and and driving that hip forward and around through the turn i think you can build this i think it's gonna help yeah this feels really good to do this ah.
Okay, super cool. Just some thinking and studying the body. Um, it's a good practice. Take an hour. It doesn't have to be all in spotlight public with a gym. Take some time to really meditate on you and the ideas that your coaches give you and take those ideas and, and uh, uh, focus them into the body, the anatomy. You don't really have to know the anatomy. You just have to try to mimic the positions and feel it, grip those muscles. And uh, uh, for your level of skiing, I think it's going to make a lot of sense for you. I hope you dig it. All right, peace.